And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Gridiron Icon Pod Show, where we visit with iconic people, players, athletes, entertainers, those of different walks of life, each and every week, and we bring them to you for fans at every level. I'd like to welcome my podcast partner, my boy, my whatever you want to call him, but I could say my brother from a different mother, but we don't look alike, do we, except for a little bit of this, but <laughs> Mr. Stacy Bauman, ladies and gentlemen, is joining us. We're going to double team, um, and I know our guest is familiar with that term, double team, so, and we've heavily, Stacy, you and I have had, if, if you've thought about this, we've had more defensive personnel on our show than offense, and um uh, but you know the game is won on the defense. We just provide Thank some you. scoring. Thank you. That, that was a good deal. When you interject on that. You, you, oh, see? Around, once it's over, you're going to say, man, that defense just took care of its business. And that's what it is, man. Oh, yeah. see, there you go. And if, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> with no kind of introduction, he just jumps right in the fire. But I'm going to tell you who, who just made that wonderful statement. Our guest today is from the defensive side of the ball. Play defensive end. Uh, hailing from Hampton University, where he was inducted into the school's Hall of Fame and chosen in the 1978 NFL draft, being selected in the seventh round, uh, pick number 189. Should have been a little higher, but uh, right. we'll talk about that. Where he played for 10 seasons with our own Los Angeles Rams. I didn't have the chance to do that. Out of San Antonio, Texas, where they still have a big old statue outside the state lines on him, Big Boss Doss, number 71, ladies and gentlemen, in your book, Mr. Reggie Doss. Welcome, Big D. Hey, thank you, thank you. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. <laughs> I've, been, I've been checking you guys out, you know, over the, over the months, man. You guys have been lighting it up and tearing it up, man, you know. I just kind of so, found man. out, you know, from Stacey, where he he's actually where he's podcasting from. I thought, you know, you guys were like around the corner and just decided to get together, you know, <laughs> on the studio backdrop. But Don't hey, ruin the uh, illusion. Don't, Don't ruin it. Illusion. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> hey, that, 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 that adds a little more dimension to it, Stacey. You know, yes, you brought, it does. Brought, <laughs> well, I, I, I just. Man, you know, man, I've been looking forward to it. Oh, we're excited. We, we, we've been waiting on this one, and uh, it's, it's really been a wonderful ride. And so today is a different little flavor because Stacy and I both decided that we were going to bring a little flavor to the show. And when he saw Reggie, you probably recognize this jersey from one of our, our past guests, a good buddy of ours, yeah. Mr. Cephas Weatherspoon, the Spoon Dog. I had to text him and let him know. Guess what I'm wearing on the show today for Big Red? Oh, man. <laughs> man, oh. Remind him of it when I when I get off. I'm gonna call him up right now. Man. Oh man, when the show is over, we go when 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 Stacy gets done with his tightness of the show, I'm gonna send it to him. He'll be able to see it. But let's oh, get started. Yeah. Our, our our folks are so excited about learning this. Reg, we're gonna back up. We're gonna take it all the way back, past college, past high school. Through elementary school, we're going backwards. Take us to the first day that you embraced athletics. How did you get started? Who brought that motivation to you? And tell us about your journey as a young athlete. Oh, wow, man. You know, we're we going way back. You know? We're way back. <laughs> you know, and, and, you know, just kind of kind of jump forward a little bit. You know, I, that wasn't, uh, you know, football was not my not my first love. My first love was was baseball, man. Baseball was my wow. was my thing. You know and I mean, and I, you know, started out at you know in the little league, you know, and uh, even before that, when I, you know, because I was actually I was born in Mobile, Alabama, and we uh, lived there until uh, my dad got transferred from an Air Force base there, Brooklyn Field. They closed down, so we wound up moving to Texas to. Kelly Air Force Base in San Antonio, but even like in elementary school back in in uh, Alabama, man, we used to go out and play softball and stickball during recess and doing PE. And uh, there was another kid named was uh, Bob Allen Lee, and I never forget this guy. He 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 reminds me of little Abner the way he looked. You know, he was a black kid, had <laughs> curly hair, 
And uh, he and I, we were like like the sluggers, man. You know, we get up, everybody get go back by the walkway because we're gonna crank it. You know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, that I think that just kind of got my my juices flowing. You know, what got me going with with baseball? You know, sure, we you know played a little flag football and touch football, and a little tackle around, but baseball was my love, man. That that was that was that my folks had to come out and get me. Like, all right, dude, let's go. It's dark, you can't see anything. Come on, let's get in the house. You know, but that, that was my love right there, man. Man, that's a common theme with a lot of our guests on this show. Baseball actually was a sport to introduce everybody to athletics, seems like. And, and, and you know, Reg, you and I may have talked about this, but I didn't realize it was how you actually started out. And how long did you play baseball? You know, I, I started I started when I didn't play any organized baseball in, in Alabama. When we moved to Texas, I was about nine, eight or nine years old. So I didn't start baseball until I was probably about 10. You know, and I started a little league team that was over in like Lincoln Heights was like almost over in the hood, you know, but I had some <laughs> of my some of my some of my uh, guys that I went to like junior high. Uh, I mean, before that, uh, you know, they actually went to school there. So I remember playing my first little league baseball game. We were the Cubs was our, our baseball name and I didn't have baseball cleats uh, to where I wore some three quarter length desert boots that I wore, you know, <laughs> light brown <laughs> desert boots that I wore. And, they, and they, they joked me about those boots, man, the whole morning until I got up, I think my second time in the back, I took one deep over the fence. After that, I didn't have any other problem about them talking about my cleats. But I found out a few days later though, right? <laughs> but yeah, oh, that, that, that was so like my highlight that actually got me started. And, you know, played progressively on through and, uh, Played up until, you know, almost high school. And then, you know, I was on the actual wow. baseball team in high school my my junior and my senior year. So I played baseball, varsity, you know, and if, if I could only hit the breaking balls a little better, you know, it would give you a good description of how it actually worked for me. I'm, I'm sure you two have seen this old Bugs Bunny cartoon when he's pitching, when uh, they're pitching to him. And I don't know if it's Yosemite Sam, but he throws his pitch and it's curving yes. at him as it comes to him. Yes. And he goes like, one, two. <laughs> <laughs> like, out. Yes. That was me. You don't break the ball. I'm going to swing until I can't swing anymore, man. It's like whack-a-mole. Can I get that thing if I keep swinging at it? But I, I just, I mean, you throw hard heat, uh, uh, anything inside, out, high, or low. If I, if I can get the bat on it, I'm, I'm trying to crank it. <laughs> wow. you, you remember that charity event we did in, Quarter Lane, Idaho. Yes, the softball you know, tournament. That, yes. You know, that tournament, yeah. you know? And, and that, yes. And Stacey, you, you, you probably don't know about that one, but we went to Quarter Lane, Idaho for a fundraiser. And so we played, it was uh, Preston, Denard, myself, Stephen Weatherspoon. Uh, I think we had Dale Bunn. We had yep. uh, Marvin Smith. Smith. Yeah, well, uh, kind of go down the line. We had we know, we we came with a, a pretty good little squad when we went up there. We didn't know we were going to play the game, but we got there, and we were playing like the state champs in Idaho what? at this stadium. So we go to the stadium, and there's probably 300 people in mm -hmm. the stands. I mean, you know, and it was like wow, you know. So we get out, and you know, everybody get their introduction. You know, when you come up to bat, so. Preston, I think, was lay, lay it off, and boom, he gets the base hit. He goes and gets the first, or he gets the second. Uh, somebody else gets up. I don't know what happened to him. But then Cephas gets up, and he drives one back deep. And so we got runners on first and third. Preston's on third, and, and Spoon's on second. I come up to bat, you know, a, a little arrogant, you know, maybe, maybe, <laughs> a, a, little, a little confident. So I, I point the bat out the old Babe Ruth when he yeah. pointed out for left field. You know, so I put the bat out. So everybody and announcer goes, "Oh, Mr. Dawes, he's he's pointing. He's doing the classic Babe, Babe Ruth that he pointed out the left field. Oh. So the left field, you know, and the guys we were playing against, they were really good players. So he was he kind of went along with. The thing. He jumps up on the fence. We had a, what about a seven foot high? <laughs> yeah. He jumps up and sits sits on the fence like this. All right, come on, come on, oh. big boy. You know, like this, right? So that, that just gave me a little more motivation. So I think first <laughs> pitch, move. I what happened. Second pitch, like right in my wheelhouse, dude. I just, and it went probably about 20 feet over his head, lying straight out. And it's like, people went crazy. And I was like, yeah, yeah. I was, I was like, what happened? But I played it off. Like, <laughs> I panned it. But 
that, you know, that was one of my highlights, man. That that was kind of really fun because we just had a great time playing with these guys, and it was just a just a fun event. But that's just kind of showed baseball was, was my love, man. Finally, a defensive lineman gets his moment in the spotlight. In the spotlight. It's a different oh, sport, but, you know. Exactly. <laughs> wow. That is incredible. They, I, Preston, I, it's amazing. So many guests outside of Nolan Cromwell who said basketball. I think mm -hmm. every other guest we've had on this show in the last mm -hmm. eight months started with baseball. In fact, yeah. my co-host is a 388 hitter. All-State baseball player, as I know. He's got that bat somewhere. He's got it somewhere, yeah, Reggie. Baby. Oh, there it is. Yeah. There it is, Reggie. Look at that big Reg. Hey. Yep. Hey, 388. Hey, 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 I, I, mean... I, I, I know the boy can play now. <laughs> the Rams so, used, to have a, used to have a little team, Stacy, that we used to go and play like different like fire departments, uh, faculty oh, and staff from different high schools around town. You know, baseball, we used to play them in, in softball, and we play them in basketball. You know, and, and PD was always the one. There he goes. There he He's goes. Got the jersey, if you're watching on YouTube. <laughs> the old basketball jersey. <laughs> Unbelievable. I still got it, Red. You got yours? Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Wait, <laughs> can you can you guys fit in them though? That's oh. what that's what watchers want to know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I'll admit if I had one, I, I can get in mine now. You can get in oh, yours. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm right. a few pounds shy than I was Respect. running around with those pads on. Uh, all right. <laughs> Respect. Okay. All right. Talking about those pads now. So we talked about baseball. When does football come into the picture? Yeah. You know, uh, football, I was always, you know, especially when, when I moved to Texas, you know, I, I lived in a neighborhood where we had, uh, we lived in a 12 block neighborhood. And our street, Jarvis Drive, was like the last street, unless you consider like the first street, where all the traffic would come down, and it was it wasn't it was only like a one direction. You had to come and make that that left turn to go back to get to the main street. There, so we'd be out in the streets playing, you know. And my position in football then was, you know, I wasn't bigger, bigger, bigger than a lot of the guys, you know, a little bit size wise, but I had the strongest arm, you know, and I could catch. So I, if I'm I'm either going to be the quarterback or I'm going to be one of the receivers. I'm not getting up there blocking anybody, okay? And I'm not having that. Because I said, if somebody got to throw me, you can get in my spot as far as quarterback. Other than that, I'm the quarterback. And, and we used to be out there in the street till almost kind of like baseball. We'd be out till night, you know. And every time a car would come, you know, because we were about the fifth, sixth house down from the corner. So as soon as those light hit the corner and hit it, and, we, and we'd all break and get on the sidewalk. And the look we gave them cars like, you're messing up our game. Hurry up and get on out of here, will you? Uh, you know, but I remember all the guys on the street that was there, man, you know, had two brothers across the street. When I say brothers, not not uh, brother brothers, but, you know, uh, mm -hmm. Mike and uh, Greg Gendrish, you know what I mean? And, mm -hmm. and we had a couple of guys down the street. I mean, we'd all have our teams and we'd go out and we just kind of have at it, man. But that was kind of the first kind of touch in football. But during that time, I, I started out, in the, I'm going to say sixth grade, hmm. I was actually in the band. I played the E-flat alto sax, you know, wow. I still got it. I still have it. And from eight, I guess, eight years old up until, I guess, my freshman year in high school, I was in the band. I was looking forward to getting in the marching band because, you know, we had the green Kelly uniforms with the white tassels on the sleeves, you know, the white hats. You know. <laughs> I was like, I can see myself, you know, hit, you know, making those moves, you know, doing the, in the band, like, oh man, man. And I used to come to school every day with my horn and I go down the hall and this one player that was on the team then, Gene Washington, God bless his soul. Back as a freshman, he was like 6'3", 240 pounds as wow. a freshman. Whoa. And they used to call him Big Wash, you know. And he used to sit <laughs> up in the in the windowsill because you walk through the front of the school, you go past the cafeteria, and, it's, and on the other side of the hallway of the cafeteria, these big windowsills. So everybody used to sit up there. You know, that was kind of like the hangout spot. So when I come in, I have my sax. I'm going to put my sax in the locker. He'd always say, Dawson. Put that doggone sax down and come out and play football. You know, <laughs> like I'm like, no, dude. You know, I'm, this is this is my my boy right here. This is going to be my my friend. <laughs> I'm thinking about getting in the marching band and you know this and that. And he's like, man, you need to come out for football because in PE class, 
they saw, you know, I guess what kind of athlete I was. You know, they knew all the things that we would play from softball to even soccer to basketball. You know, uh, I was pretty decent, you know, and a couple I excelled in. So they knew I had some athletic ability. And to this date, you know, you know, God bless both of those coaches, Coach Wright and the other one. I, they knew that I was in the band. I wasn't coming out. But I know the coach put big wash up to it, but he used to joke me every day, man, put that damn horn down and cook it. <laughs> you know, come on out here, you know, you've been a damn band. I mean, everybody, anybody can be in the band. But and that's when that, that comes to another point where that's how I learned my first edge on being competitive because mm. I don't know if one of you guys have been in a band before, but you get into a band, you got a hundred some kids, you got 10, 12. Uh, trumpets, you got 10 or 12 mm -hmm. trombones, you got 10 or 15 drummers, you got the tuba, you got the clarinet, you got the flute, you got the French horn. I mean, you got all of these instruments, right? And everybody wants to play the E flat alto sax, you know, because the E flat, the baritone, <laughs> and the tenor sax are the three. And it, we had to have like 12 or 13 E flat alto sax. Whoa. And so, in how I got my competitive edge, I think that carried over into sports for me. If you were, say you were placed and you were number eight or nine out of 10 or 12 saxophone players, you wanted to challenge because you have to compete. Everybody who's in front of you, you have to challenge them <clears throat> to see if you can take their seat, their chair. So if you, all right, I'm gonna, I say, I'm gonna challenge you, Stacey, because you're in chair number six and I'm in number seven. So. I'll tell the band director, he'll give us some music to go home and practice and study for a couple of days. Boom, you come back in that morning, like before school, after school, and there you go. You play your, and he, <laughs> and I play mine. And whoever wins it, boom, that's how you get the chair. That's how you advance. Wow, really? And I never, it was like 15 of us. I never got past second chair, you know, but I mean, I was in a comfortable spot because I, I knew I was pretty good, you know, to beat out all these others. But that gave me that competitive edge, like, okay, I, I need to go practice a little bit, you know. And hmm. <laughs> I know I drove my folks crazy because I'd go home and I would practice. Mm -hmm. I'd be in the home, eh, eh, eh. I'd be making all those crazy sounds. <laughs> I know it's like, you know, come on, you, you know, house is not that big. You grew up in, so it's like you know, <laughs> you're driving them nuts. But you know, they they put the effort and investment in me to do it. And that, that's where I was. I mean, there's no way I was leaving that until I, I finally got to the point, Stacy and Preston, that I was not going to listen to these dudes joke me and bug me about my sack. So I said, all right, I'm coming out. And I, I went out like halfway through the season. Oh, so wow. I go out and I, you know, didn't know, I mean, I knew basic football. I used to watch it and used to play quarterback and receiver. <laughs> so <laughs> that they were going to have me play. So I wound up, actually, they put me on the line. So the coach spent a little extra time with me because I, and, you know, to this day, I always say, dude, you're the reason why I'm out here. You kept bugging these guys to get on me to get out here. <laughs> you know, because, of course, he talked to this guy, too. So he saw all the athletes that's, that the, at the school yeah. image. So anyway, I go out. And I'm going to say probably the second, third week, Big Wash got his knee blown out. And actually, mm. it was like that. It was like a career-ending injury for him, you know. Uh, and, uh, you know, the last time I saw him, he passed away a few years ago. But last time I saw him, he, he had that noticeable limp, you know, you know, the rest wow. of his life. And and when I saw him at, at my 20th year high school reunion, you know, years ago, he came up to me and goes, yeah, Doss, I'm the reason why you played in the NFL for 10 years. I'm the reason I said, I said, why is you right? I gave him a big hug around the shoulder. I was like, man, come over, let me buy you a drink. Matter of fact, let me buy you two or three drinks. <laughs> so it, he was the main reason for me getting out of the band and actually playing that, uh, playing that sax that I still love to this day and uh, getting into football. Wow, you're still playing the saxophone. <clears throat> you know, I still have it. I, I don't nice. play it very well now, but there's like a couple songs. Let me tell you this story, Stacey, about four years ago, uh, maybe close to five, my, my kids in like junior high, and they wanted to take a, a band. They wanted to get in band, so they didn't pick an instrument. So, you know, one chose the, uh, the drums, you know, and the other one chose the, the saxophone, you know, so in the uh, 
he didn't have mine, but we, we had a friend that had one that gave it to him to, you know, practice and to play. So I pulled mm -hmm. mine out. And this is before he, him even knowing about me playing. So I pulled it out. And I, I remember the Batman song. You know, I remember Mission Impossible, you know, and I walk it out on They all the mobs just dropped. Like, wait a minute, do you you used to be a football player? How'd you learn how to do that? I said, dude, that's practice and practice and it's stuff some some things you never forget, like that old saying around the bike. But I I broke those tunes out for them and they were like in awe. So Robbie, the one that helped me get set up here. He wanted to play do the sax. And mm -hmm. it's like, you know, <laughs> at the end of the year, you know, said, Do you want to sand back off a sax again? He said, Well, I don't know. Yeah, you know, I didn't I didn't do very well. I said, Robert, you know why? The entire year I did not hear you going <laughs> in your room practicing at all. Uh, you bring that sax home, you put it in your in your room, and you take it. You, you forgot a few times I had to turn around and come back and go get it because you just sits in the room, dude. <laughs> but, but that that so that sax was kind of like my like my first love, man. And, and I, I wow. actually got that That's from an so uncle. Cool. I had an uncle that lived in New York, and uh, he used to play the sax, and he used to play like jazz music because you know New York, of course, you got the basements. He go down and just that tune, oh, man, yeah. it just kind of just resonated in my brain. Like, oh, Lee, man, I'm going to do that one day. But uh, bigger Washington football kind of got me away from that. But I still have it. It's, it's like under the desk over here now. I want to pull it out, but I, I do have it still, man. But that, that was I, my first love. I think Robbie needs to look out because we've already heard how you were dueling people for the second chair. So <laughs> poor kid's going to come out of his room one night. And you're going to be standing there with your saxophone. Like, <laughs> come on, dude. Hey, come on. And, we, and we still got time in the show, so you can break that sax out anytime you want. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh. oh little Frank. He shouldn't have told me it's under the desk. <laughs> by, by knowing Preston for all these 40 five years oh you my know, god Oof. you know it's been that long you know that right wow it's, I was talking, yeah I was talking to Ivory sully a couple of days ago we mm -hmm. then had breakfast and i was talking to him and i was like man i said you know other than uh other than you you know i mean Preston's i'm known Preston, man 40 45 years 45 years wow yeah. and that's what that means i've known Preston. i mean uh sully for 44 years because he came the year yeah after, year after mm -hmm. he went to the super bowl well, yeah. That's amazing. Unreal. It is. It is. Especially, it is. especially the, the music. I mean, if everybody that has come on this show has a special alter talent, I'll say, that we either engulfed in that nobody knows about. Who would ever thought? Reggie Doss, <laughs> saxophone player. So yeah, you take is. that, you do that. It's been your love for the rest of your life. All of a sudden, you found an opportunity that was getting ready to take you some places. So you're in high school, you're playing ball. Um, tell us about that journey, your senior year, honors you made, and then how you got to choose in Hampton. You know, that, you know I, and, I, and kind of looking at, at my kind of high school story, it, it was, uh, it, it, it wasn't fancy. It wasn't, it wasn't mm -hmm. like one of those glamour things, you know, where, hey, you know, I had this epiphany, like, oh man, I can do this if I do this it, it wasn't that wasn't me at all i was kind of like kind of like just one of the guys you know because i was i was learning because i was young i was 16 at the start of my senior year in football you know oh you know that then that was kind of like my you know i i was still learning you know when i started like you know, about ninth grade i was i was 13 14 15 16. I, I was like 13 you know in high school you know as a freshman so 14, 15, 16, as when I got to be, you know, a senior, I was still kind of learning kind of what, trying to find myself, what are you doing out here? You know what I mean? Sure, I had some athletic ability and that I could do things, you know, maybe a little better than some of the other guys, you know, because I started my junior and my senior year, you know, played JV in my sophomore year. And, and speaking of that, you know, just thinking of somebody who, really had an influence, you know, in my life regarding football. I had this coach. His name was Tom Hardy. He had Tom a Hardy. cup of coffee with the Cowboys back in the day. He's like 6'9". He was about 270, 80 pounds in. Big, wow. The biggest white dude I'd ever seen in my life. And he had <laughs> one of those, he had one of those rugged marine-like chins. You've seen pictures of, of silhouettes, you know, this big long chin. Mm -hmm. with in it. And he used to chew beech nut chewing tobacco, you know, 
Yeah, and he'd be out there. He have his he have his his cap on pulled down over. You know, because I used to wear hats back in the days. Like Jack Faulkner used to wear hats mm-hmm. with the Rams when we were rookies. President, he had the hat with uh, the back yeah. stuff. It looked kind of like a truck truck driver's cap, right? And he's <laughs> wearing his cap, and he had these little little tight little shorts because the coaching shorts used to go like eight inches above your knee. <laughs> you know, almost <laughs> like hot pants, kind of like the Lakers uniforms with Magic Johnson and Cooper when mm-hmm. he first came mm-hmm. to play. Oh, short yeah. little, and he walk around, had these big giant casts with these black coaching shoes, and he walk around spinning tobacco all over the field. And he he was my defensive line coach, and he pulled me aside one day. It's probably, it had to be probably maybe about the third, fourth game in the season on the JV team. And he pulled me aside, and he kind of said, "Reggie," he said, "And I watch you." He said, "You got so much potential, but if you get your head out your butt," he goes. Because you, <laughs> you, you you go full speed on this play, and then you take a break. Yeah. You go full speed here, and, it, and it's like, I can see it in you, but you got to get your lazy butt and start. And, and and me, it's like, wait a minute, my dad don't even talk to me that way because I do my <laughs> choice. <laughs> and, and who, and my dad's, you know, a, a master tech sergeant, you know, and I, and I, and who do you do talk to me other than you being the, as big as this building? You know what I mean? And I'm looking up at him, and I'm saying to myself, and I, I, and I could, at that moment, I could have taken it two ways. I could have went into the mindset of, you know, screw this guy. You know, I'm just mm-hmm. doing it. Yeah. You know, it's fun. I'm enjoying it. You know what I mean? I ain't taking it that serious. But, but the mindset that I had then was like, wait a minute, here's the guy. Uh, all these guys that are out here, he picked me to point out what you can potentially be if you mm-hmm. work hard at it. You know, and I, what he saw in me, I didn't see it. You know, and I get up looking in the mirror every morning because you know, I'm always in the mirror <laughs> doing something. And so he, he saw something in me that that he said could, you know, hey, dude, you know, you you could do something in life, you know, and you could you could have fun and enjoy doing it, and that just kind of stuck in my brain, and it just kind of mm-hmm. resonated with me. And I think that was kind of, you know, from talks I've had with my dad, which wasn't in a serious thing about sports. He's just and always supported me, you know. But <clears throat> this guy, Tom Hardy, I never forget this guy. I wish I could have seen him again. Uh, anywhere in life, you know, just to see him, just give him a big hug. I, I can call up to him a little bit. I still didn't make six nine, but he, so he <laughs> got it. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to say he, he kind of instilled that into me, not so much as intimidation or just because of him, but just because somebody kind of cared enough to like say, look, dude, you're going to be out here. You got mm-hmm. potential to do something really great as far as playing this game. Put your all into it. Don't just wake up and yeah. go to sleep, wake up and go to sleep on it. So once he t- t- told me that, you know, we became like uh, almost like best buddies, you know, and that, you know, before you knew it, like the next year, you know, he had this, this green, like, man, it had to be 70, 70 or 71 Plymouth. You know, those cars <laughs> that used to be like a block long. Right. Had <laughs> almost that army green color. And and, and he had a, He's, and when I got to be like a junior, when I got my license, he, he used to have this platoon cup sitting right <laughs> on the little hump in the middle of the front seat. And he's like, he go, he come over and he's like, Reggie, here, here's five bucks. We'll get, go get a, get us some lunch, and then go and take my car by the car wash, you know, and come and come on back. And I'm like, you know, <laughs> all right, I get that. <laughs> The, the worst thing about the ride is I didn't want to drive crazy and let that damn spittoon cup spill over something <laughs> way. And I'll be mad as I don't know what then. But <laughs> he trusted me enough to, to take his car and go get his lunch and stuff like that, man. But he was like, you know, the guy that really kind of turned my my thinking mm-hmm. around as far as, you know, hey, what do you want to do for yourself in the future? And not, you know, not not for me, not for this team, but for yourself. Yeah. Wow, there's always man. one. Wow. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. There's always some, somebody, something. Exactly. Incredible. That's amazing. Well, I'll tell you, uh, we need an entire hour to talk about playing at a school like Hampton University and how special mm-hmm. that was, particularly during that decade. But oh, we yeah. got to we got to do the fan service. We got to move into those Los Angeles Rams days. Uh, okay. We got a lot, a big audience uh, that knows who number seventy one is. <clears throat> so. You get drafted into the seventh round of the NFL draft. And in those days, uh, for you young people listening, the draft was a bazillion rounds and almost nobody watched it except for us nerds Mm -hmm. and nut jobs like myself who just tried to gather information. But 
you get drafted into the seventh round. Were you excited? What was that experience like? Was it a, a disappointment to go in the seventh instead of the first? Or were you excited to be in the NFL? What was that like for a, a kid? Well, well Stacy, you know, and as Preston knows, you know, because we, we talked about it for years, you know, going to a small historical black college like Hampton, you know, I was, I was, you know, it kind of set me in, in motion to, if there's something that you want to do, you know, cause I, I talk about my, my college coach, we just had an event for him back in July. He turned 93 wow. years old. So we had a oh, big celebration. Mm, for him. Awesome. So I flew back to Virginia and I, and, you know, and, PD in states I, I saw guys I hadn't seen since I left Hampton mm-hmm. forty some years ago, wow. and we you know had a huge presentation for him. You know you know had about two hundred and fifty people, you know attended this event for him, and uh, he was he was one of these guys that were if you look at him by stature he's a little guy thin guy but he had this deep mm-hmm. baritone voice. You know he's every time you see him he got a cigarette in his mouth. You know, he's talking, but he had this big baritone voice coming out of his little body. When I say little body, I'm going to say he was probably maybe 5'10", probably 150 pounds soaking wet. You know what I mean? Wow. But he just he just kind of demanded respect for him just in his tone, just in the just way he carried himself. And he kind of kind of shaped me and mold me into the guy. He, as my freshman year there, Stacey, I know I'm going back a little bit. That's okay. He, showed up and i remember one of the other quarterbacks that we had on our team that you justin baker you know my boy man you know love him like a brother man I, he, he's two years older than i am his birthday is december 5th and mine is december nice. 7th so his name justin baker was our quarterback and so we come in as freshmen and hampton had won maybe three four games in the last five years i mean they were they like the doormat you know it was it was a it was a, a school mm-hmm. of like pretty much like of higher learning, you know, it's called Hampton Institute back in the day. And they, you know, the only thing that was really good, good about them was their tennis team because they had an international tennis team led by Dr. Screen. And he had guys from different countries and they used to go out, come out and play UCLA and just spank everybody. Wow. I mean, they had a great tennis team and they had, you know, the nursing, the nursing uh, department and also a great military department also. Football was not one of those places. So when I got there, along with Baker and I think he had about maybe 10, 11 freshmen that came in with us. We were the, the ones that kind of turned that whole program around. And we he, he gave us opportunity to say, look, first meeting, he's, I don't care who you are. I don't care what your classification is. If you come out and you, I see you're giving your all to make this team and to do this and that, you're going to play. And when he said that, it's like, okay, ooh, eyes lit up. Okay, mm-hmm. I, I just left, you know, high school where I didn't, I didn't get any honors. I didn't make all district. I didn't make all conference. I didn't make any wow. of that. I, you mm-hmm. know, even though eight or nine guys on the defense did make it, I was that. I was wasn't one of those guys. You know, that's wow. why I said I was kind of under the radar for a long time because I'm still learning this game. But when I got there, he gave an opportunity, man. I think first day of practice, the biggest guy out there, I just took it to him, man, just lit him up. And the <laughs> coach, come back here. And the guy that I went against him, never forget his name. His name was Carl Basco. He was like 6'4", 6'5", 325 pounds. Mm. Next, next to the biggest guy I've ever seen in my life, okay? And I'm saying, <laughs> oh, man, so – and he had a full beard. And at that time, I'm 17. I got no hair on my face. Just the afro, the afro going, okay? And so I decided that, that day and that practice, after that coach talked to us that night, because I had gone to Hampton without even, other than looking at brochures. And the reason why I wound wow. up there was that my high school coach graduated from Hampton and played ball there. He was like all conference player. His name was Clyde Clack. And he came in my senior year at, in, at Sam Houston High School to coach me and he said, Reggie, if you go to school at Hampton, because I had four or five scholarship offers, you know, I think the biggest one was probably Texas Tech, you know, that I looked at, but you know, I don't want to go out and Texas Tech's in the boonies. I don't know if you have been there, but especially back in oh yeah. 74, <laughs> 75, when I was graduating, it's like, I'm yeah, in the I don't want to go there. Right. And the coach said, if you go there, you get a chance, you'll get an education. You won't be just a football player that majoring in basket weaving one or two to keep you eligible to play for the next season. 
And I said, you know what? And, I, and, and these, once I saw the brochures, and, and it's not like now the internet, you go on, and you're like, oh, man, mm-hmm. sure. A, a, a view of the campus, you know. All I saw was just the brochure. I said, man, this, this place is like, it's almost surrounded by water. It's like it's around the chest. <laughs> it's a water. I said, man, there's no water in San Antonio unless you get out of say, in the, in the tub too <laughs> long. There's nothing here, right? So I said, okay, sign me up, coach. I'm on my way. And he said, he knew about Coach Love and he said, his new coach. And like I said, just that combination of how I got there. And when I got there, just the opportunity that he gave me, man, it was just great. And getting back to your original question about the draft, I made all conference my last two years. Uh, nice. And I made uh, All America my, my, my senior year. Senior year. And, mm-hmm. you know, we, we talk in Hampton, you know, Division two school. And our, our record went from our freshman year, we were three and seven. My second year, we were five and five. And my last few years, we were seven and four. And it's nice. like we turned the whole program around, you know, because we, we got on the field. You know, I was kind of like, I, I want to say like the silent leader or the captain, but I was one I had to show by example. So I, I would just blow somebody up on the field. And then, I, you know, <laughs> you're talking about trash. I was like, get up and say, all right, everybody, let's go. Let's get it. Just like that. That's how we got to play. And it, that whole respect thing that Hampton used to be the doormat, it went out the window, man. People used to, they didn't, they didn't like to show up and play us. I mean, you know, we, we didn't win any conference championships, anything like that. But that whole, just that brain functionality and the momentum that, wait a minute, this, this is not the same school. We used to come here four or five years ago and just stomp these guys mm-hmm. around. That wasn't mm-hmm. happening anymore. And by me making all conference and all American, I was the second guy actually drafted out of Hampton. There was another guy who was drafted in the, in the late 60s. Mm-hmm. And that passed away after a few years, went to Detroit. But, you know, I, I kind of wore that as kind of like my little badge of sure. honor. I had, I had to uphold that when I showed up yeah. with, with the Rams. It's like, you know, Preston and I, we were roommates, you know, as freshmen. What, I mean, as a rookie, it's like, man, a rookie. Whoa, oh, wait around. a minute. You, you two were roommates. I was, was just, I was just waiting. I was waiting for the right time to break that okay. in. Go ahead, Red. Tell the story and then tell the story about the Turk. <laughs> Oh, Tell them man. about the Turk. So, oh, we roommates. And we were over at Cal State Fullerton. So we yeah. in this quite had apartments right over by the cafeteria on the other side from where the football field was. So University Village is the name of it. Mm-hmm. So Preston and our roommates in one of the bedrooms in the back. We had two more uh, rookies on the other side. And I think, was it Frank? Was it Frank? Frank Carell. Frank Carell. He was up in a single room up in front. You know, he's a second mm-hmm. round pick. He's he going to make the team. So he you know, <laughs> comes in. I'm a seventh round pick. They had drafted like a guy in front of me in the second in the second round. You know, Stan. Uh, Big Stan. Yep. <laughs> and this guy, that's when we pulled up in minicamp over, over at Blairfield Long Beach. You know, all the rookies was there. This guy, we stayed at the little, it was one of the Holiday Inn, but some little hotel that's oh, close. Man. This guy rose up and he had this big purple brand new <laughs> looking continental. And, I, and and he gets out of the car, you know, big dude, kind of kind of chubby, smoking a cigar. Yeah. <laughs> and, it's, and, it's like, and so we all looking at him, who is this dude right here rolling up here? He said, the veterans ain't coming in yet, you know? And he rolls up, yeah, what's up, fellas? My name's Stan Johnson. I'm from Connecticut. I'm the number two draft pick. I'm like, oh. <laughs> so wrong you, thing you, to you do. Coming in, you coming in like you already on the team, right? And that, and that pissed me off even more. I said, you can draft this guy before me because I got $7,500 signing bonus. He got $75,000 signing bonus. I'm like, wait a minute. Oh. So it was oh, on. Yeah. It was on when he showed up. What? So, so needless oh, to yeah. say, when we got in the camp, you know, they, they used to have these days, they said it was like, <clears throat> we didn't have the crowds they had like at Rams training camp now we have a couple hundred people every day mm-hmm. huh, PD? Mm-hmm. and they've got to stand so every thursday carol rosenblum who was the owner at the time oh yeah would come out to practice <laughs> so it's pressing i go all right dude we got to do something today we're, we're rosenblum <laughs> gonna see us we got to stand out we got to show ourselves you know because i'm a seventh round pick president's a free agent so it's like okay so i'm down here doing one-on-one pass rush zeros with jackie slater and Pinky and John Williams. No, no Pinky wasn't there yet. Yeah, but all Pinky these, went. Era, you know, all these guys are like, you know, pass rush drill. I'm, and so Preston's down there. He's running routes, 907, diving, making catches, and everybody, yeah, they cheering. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, Preston's doing this damn part. They're not even watching me over here. I'm over here. <laughs> the only thing I could do, Stacey, if, if I did not win one, the, the, one of the drill battles, I started a fight. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> 
I started a fight. And it's like, and it's and it funny because after about the second preseason game, Rosenblum would walk <laughs> into the locker room for the preseason. And one thing I, I did not know him well, but what I what I kind of loved about this guy, he'd go around to every player in that mm-hmm. locker room, you know, hit you on the shoulder pads or touch you on yep. the head, shake your hand, say, "All right, Stacey, tonight, go ahead and do what while we got you here." Go ahead and do your job, and and you just had to respect somebody that would do that. He'd go to every yeah. person in that locker room. So, <laughs> when after that, it came down to cut date, and I remember because we played Oakland the last game, the last preseason game. The Raiders up in up in Oakland. So here I am. I'm a rookie. I'm trying to make this team. President had a kind of locked down because President was like catching all of everybody. He was just like, mm, you know, I don't know. All, <laughs> he's pissed off all the DBs and all, first of all, because he, he was just like working them. And it, his, his college name was Magic. I don't know if you knew that. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> oh, yes. We've had a few of his teammates uh, yeah. so, uh, share so, that. So when it came down to this last preseason game, Okay, mm-hmm. and Stan Johnson's still here, you know. <laughs> yeah, he's still here because they draft like a ninth round pick and I think another round pick. Back then they had 14 rounds. So I was kind of in the middle of the of the of the boat there when I got drafted. So it comes to the last preseason game and uh playing the Raiders. So I'm backing up Dreyer and uh and the other guy, uh, uh Stan Johnson backing up Larry Brooks, who Larry Brooks and I, we had the same college coach, but he was at Virginia mm-hmm. State. Larry Brooks oh, played for him. So interesting. he's always, that's another story I'd get back to another time, but he's always said, man, you remind me of Larry Brooks so much, so much. So I get in this, yeah, I'm in the, at the game and I'm only, only doing like, you know, special team running down this and that. So I'm like waiting to get in. So this is a national televised game. John Madden called the game along with like Brookshire, whoever was with him during that time. So it's like big game, especially because, hey, I'm trying to make this team, man. You know, it's like, okay, the lights are on. And here you are, Hampton Institute. Most of them can't hear. I remember Hank Strand goes, we played New, New England a couple years later. He goes, this guy, uh, Reggie Doss, he's out of, where is he from? Hampton Institute. He's like, golly, but damn, they sure know how to make ball players in Hampton. I was like, they didn't even know what the school okay. was. Okay. <laughs> so the game comes on. So Fred drives in, and of course, they got Art, Big Art Shell, they got Gene Upshaw, Ooh. you know, Henry Lawrence, all these guys were like, you want to hide your babies and kids when they get off the bus, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, scary. So, you know, you know, Art Shell, 6'7", 330 pounds. So Fred drives doing this thing, Fred was a speed guy, <clears throat> flying up field, <clears throat> you know, this and that. And so I'm over there like, okay, wait till I get in, wait till I get in, wait till I get in. So uh, Laverne Torgson, my coach, loved that guy, man. Yeah. You know, never, never spoke over a monotone voice, you know what I mean? He just, you know, just like we're having a conversation now. He's ready to go in for, for a dryer. I'm like, all right, I'm flying out there. Like, all right, I'm ready. But as soon as I get in the huddle, they call the play. As soon as I turn around, ready, you know, break, I'm ready. Pick on the big uh, art shell. I'm like, golly, man. You know? <laughs> I'm, I'm saying, okay, what am I going to do? I'm, I'm on the national stage. I'm getting my opportunity to play. I think the first play, I think I just like, I didn't do a run around, but I hit him from the outside. I was a play away. So I like, Got around him and boom, ran down. I think I like dove on the pile, you know. So I got, <laughs> got me. I said, the next play, I'm like, okay, what am I going to do with this play? I got to get up. And he just saw me. I think I like hit him and tried to go inside, but I put a spin outside and came back outside and didn't get to the quarterback. But, I, you know, he, did, he didn't pound me or pancake me. So I'm like, all right, go back to us. I got to get something right now. And I look up and they break the head, <laughs> draft this guy, Henry Mason. He was the first round pick out of Kansas, you know, rookie. A big duty. He's like, he's like six seven two, but he's about two six. But when, just the fact that I knew that he was a rookie and I saw him come in the game, oh my god! You, you, know, you know that Grinch smile when he smiles and it curls up like two or three times. I had a big old grin on my face, and I'm like, oh, thank you, Lord. And this, <laughs> next time, next play, boom! I make a tackle like in the backfield. Boom! Next play, I kinda, I almost get a sack. I kind of grab him, but. He, he broke off. And I, I, made, I made like three or four plays in a row, and I didn't notice until after the fact, but my folks said, watch the game. They said, yeah. John Madden was saying, yeah, they've got these two guys, Reggie Doss from Hampton Institute. he got this guy, Stan Johnson. He, they're competing for the, this one spot that's going to be on his team. And said, so, hell, my vote, it looks like this, this is, Reggie Doss is going to get this spot where okay. he's playing out there. I, I love it. Lord, every day I'm like, Lord, thank you for getting him out of this game and bringing that rookie in. Because <laughs> I, can, I can handle up here now, dude. Not, not a, not a that's going to be a future Hall of Famer, man. That is uh, awesome. Yeah, but, so, 
Best story about Preston, real quick. So we were roommates. So after that game, I had my real. I hurt my ribs a little bit, and it's like you know, if you ever had a real injury, but mm. breathing heavy or hard, you know, it's very uncomfortable. Okay, so I remember oh. in the bed. So we were we were in bed, and so the Turk, the Turk is the person that comes around and tells you to a uh, the head coach want to see you and bring your playbook. <laughs> That's not <laughs> I mean, a good that, sign. I mean, it's, it's over. Bad, you know, yeah. it's over. So Jack Faulkner was this guy, you know. Oh, Jack. And Jack, you know, he, he he was a fun fun guy, man. But, you know, he's almost like this old cartoon, but Hanna Barbera wears huddles. Yeah, I don't know if you yeah, that yeah. <laughs> the cabin, they got a little, you know, a little portly guy. You know what I mean? You, you know what I'm talking about, right? So oh like, yeah. So, so he could. So the door opened like about six thirty. Okay, hold on, Rich. Hold on. Tell him first of all, there were only three of us left right. in that room. That's Frank right. in the front. And Reg and I in the back. And he's coming in, and we're thinking he's cutting somebody. You got it now. Because oh, no. the, other, the other two rookies that was in, they were gone. They had been released and gone. So it was just pressing that. You know, we could have spread out. We could each had our own room. But we was like, no, we're staying here with each other. <laughs> so, we stayed here. so we were sitting there. As soon as that door unlocked, you know, because we knew it wasn't Frank. So he was still a sleeper. As soon as that door unlocked, <laughs> we both like popped up, you know, like, uh oh. And so Jack Faulkner walks into our room because nobody's in the other room. And Frank, second round pick, he ain't going nowhere. He's going to be the starting kicker. <laughs> he went into the room and looked at his, at his notebook, flipping the page, going, Denard, Doss. Oh, shit, wrong room. <laughs> he, he walked out. We were like, oh, God, what are you doing, man? I mean, we were flapping all across the bed like, dude, we know you didn't. He, he, he made our heart almost pop out of our chest when they, he walked in. But he walked in and goes, Denard, Doss, uh, damn, wrong room. <laughs> and Stacey, and I, that was, I was it. I was one of the Paul that was Bears. It. That was I was one of the Paul Bears at his funeral. About oh, him. were you? Okay. And when wow. I when I was carrying this casket, I was like, "Yeah, yo, bastard, you knew you did that." <laughs> <laughs> okay, but that that right there was, you know, we we knew we had made the team, and it was like, okay, this this is where this next journey begins. Well, I, from a fan perspective, listen, that is the coolest freaking story maybe we've ever had. But, I mean, how things turn on a dime. The rookie coming in, you get seen on TV. Uh, Preston showing off uh, in the, with the greatest defensive backfield I watched as a Rams fan. But to hear how things turn on a dime, mm -hmm. Reggie Doss, Preston Denard, Frank Corral, Super Bowl fourteen. And none of you would have been there. I mean, or yeah. maybe not you, but it just turned on a dot. That is a great story, oh, yeah. man. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's definitely a God's thing. You know, that that's my phrase yeah. I use from, from that point on. It's, it's a God's thing. You know, things that you can't describe what's going to happen or how it happened, what event. Because, yeah, as you know, we have no mm -hmm. control over the events. We just have control over how we handle the events that we come across, man. That's and true. I want to I, I want to point out to our listeners: forty five years later, you two are still pals. Oh, that's my boy. Yeah. That's more important. That's more important than any football my, game. Be yeah. dog. All right. Well, I know I know time is moving on us, but we got to get to one thing before we get to our two minute drill, and that is Reg. I want to ask if you remember this. If you do, share a little bit of thought process. We're playing our rookie year, and we're on special teams. We're on the field goal block team, PAT block team. And we're playing at Cleveland against the Cleveland Browns and Reggie's the interior line. And we go, they score, we come in, and, or I think it was a field goal. They get ready for a field goal. They call the field goal block. I'm out there. I'm the guy in the back. Got to jump high and try you're, to block you're it. the leaping Lena. <laughs> the leaping Lena. There you go, baby. I apologize I let that phrase get away from me, but it'll never go. Oh, right, but, I mean, we used to jump, you know, because we all played basketball, and, and as Reggie said. And so Cleveland comes out. They get ready to prepare for the field goal. Reggie turns to me. He said, come on, PD. We're going to get this thing right now. And I said, okay, let's go. Reggie goes, he blows up the middle. I run a step closer to the line to get even closer, and I jump, and he opens it up for me to get the block. Mind you, we lose. It's our rookie year. We're on special teams, but it was like we we won the Super Bowl, Reggie and I. We were, like, so excited about, about that. But we've had some great moments. We contributed. <laughs> 
on the field. Just put us on the field. That's all you got to do, okay? Oh, that's so cool. All right. Well, Stacy, I'm I'm going to yield to you, my friend, since I opened. Take us okay. home on the on the Q and A, the two minute drill. Okay, here we go. And listen, very clear, we need Reggie back for a part two. I mean, oh, yeah. we say this every week, but it's like we didn't even get to talk about a lot of stuff. You know but let's listen, do it. Let's do it. This, here we go, a two-minute drill. My the, coordinator set me up here. I'm, I'm ready to go, man. You're, you're ready, ready to go. Pre <laughs> the pressure is on, my friend. Red zone, two minutes, no timeouts. Here we go. Grass or turf? Uh, grass. Uh, okay. Love it. Enchiladas or pasta? Oh, enchiladas. San oh, Antonio. Okay. <laughs> okay. Texas guy. Cats or dogs? God. I mean, I've had both in my house sharing, but I'm going to have to go with dogs. Just my Hannah, she's standing over here looking at me right now. So I'm going to go with dogs. <laughs> she's, she's guilting you. They listen. That's okay. Right. She gave me that look. She gave Reggie, me that look. Reggie Doss' favorite movie. Oh. You know, I thought about that. Oh, brother, where art thou? Do you remember? Oh, yeah. George Clooney. George Clooney. Yeah. George Clooney. Oh, yeah. Brother, where art thou? I mean, it's, it's that's a great Clooney movie. It's a great scene. I love that movie, man. Yeah. <laughs> I think we should make Preston sing that theme song. Right ah, now. No, don't we'll do, do that. that. Okay. Do that. okay. Uh, he, he, he can do it now. He, I know. <laughs> I know. Music, music and baseball are the theme on this show with every guest. It's really <laughs> fascinating. Seriously. Okay. Your most underrated teammate at any level. One's always tough. I'm going to say me. Mm. Okay. Say oh, me. I like I that. To, I used to call myself the, the, the RD of the NFL, the Rodney Dangerfield. Because <laughs> an article, wow. article came out years ago in, in by the Times. I don't know. I can't get the time writer that wrote it. But toward the end of my career, I was specialized just as a two-gapper, a guy who runs, stops the run, makes the plays on a run. Past situation, my last couple of years, boom, I came out and they used to bring Gary Jeter in. And mm -hmm. the article oh, read, yeah. the better he plays, the more he's on the sideline. Like, they run a play into my wow. side, boom, I stuff it, knock it down, whatever. Boom. They're going to be past situation. Boom, they bring uh, Jeter in. You know, so that would be me. Wow. They, 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 then you look back at, at the statistic. I played over 210 games consistently. Didn't miss a game my entire no injury. career. Yeah. Yeah, That's we didn't even have time. That's why we got to have a part two. Because we didn't also talk about the Cowboys. And we didn't talk about the Super Bowl. And we didn't yeah. talk about the Huntington Beach City Gymnasium. So yeah! Part two is coming. Yeah, okay. Okay. Right. We'll stay, oh, yeah. We'll, we'll stay inside uh, the two minutes. The workouts. The workout. Oh, we got to talk. That's a story in itself. <laughs> I, and we need a whole other show. So you're committed now in the near future. Okay. I love that answer about the underrated teammate. Uh, there's people that draft yeah. the first two picks looking for Reggie Doss now. First mm -hmm. two picks of the draft, they want you. Yeah. So interesting. Your greatest football achievement. Oh, man. You know, we played Denver, I think, in 980. Two, Ooh. 81, 82. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I got the plaque over there where they used to give us uh, for a sportsman of the, of the week, NFL mm -hmm. sportsman of the week. Cool. I, I got like three and a half, almost four sacks in that game. You know, it, it wasn't, it was before Elway got there. I think it was Steve DeBerg or one of the other you know, guys that was, but I, I got to him like four times that day. And it was like, it's like the guy in front of me is like couldn't block me. I wish I had him in front of me. I can't think of his name, but I wish I had him in front of me every week. You know, <laughs> but I had more bigger highlight films. But I got like three and a half, almost four sacks that that game. And I mean, and 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 it still got me because damn, I, I could have done better. I should have had. It like could have been down there. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. but that's just kind of mentality that I think that I had, and I think a lot of guys have when they when they do something that's kind of that's kind of sets you apart on that game or particular place like man i should have had like a half a dozen more of those man mm -hmm. yeah that was it I, I, i'll i'll look it up it. next time we get on I, I'll, I'll even show the flash of the plaque in front of you back there okay yeah and we, listen we have to we have to show my age i'm sorry what no, we have to shout out offensive linemen that you abused on the Denver Broncos in 82 because oh. Stan John, Stan already got uh, a shout out. Uh, he got beat out. So we'll, wherever you are, Stan, congrats. The, the finished story about Stan Johnson, Stacy, is that he got traded to the Kansas oh. Chiefs because they signed him as a second-round pick, and they didn't want to feel like they wasted 75 yeah. grand on him. So they yep. traded him to Kansas City. 
And so when he when he came up to me, he actually said, "Hey, Doss, you uh, you beat me out, man. You know, but I got the signing bonus." I said, "Yes, you did, Stan." But I heard Kansas City gets very cold, brother. You're gonna need to buy you a lot of big coats and keep a lot of freezing that big Lincoln you're driving, boy. <laughs> I'm on the beach. It's the seventies. Oh, oh my god, god. this is so good. Not out here in uh, Southern California. <laughs> That's right. Okay, Reggie, final question that will cut you loose for and then part two is coming. Who plays Reggie Doss in a movie of your life? Oh wow. Wow, wow, wow. You know, I, I, I thought about being ever being asked that question, I would say me, but you know, I I, I don't think I could pull that off. Uh, <laughs> you don't think you can pull Reggie Doss off? I mean <laughs> well, you know what I mean I I, I wanna say, you know, somebody who's who's like top guys, actor, winning, you know, actor, you know, like Denzel all, but you know, I, I, I was not, well, I, I guess I, I was never like no pretty boy, even though, you know, I thought I was okay. <laughs> but I don't know. Uh, it, it, Idris? Alba? Alba? I was, I was thinking a little oh. Danny Glover. A little what Danny about Glover? Alba? Alba? With, with the beard I got. Yeah! Yeah. Yeah, there you go. I mean, that, Idris that, is a stud. He, he's, he's a little light, light in the pants, but yeah, I, I, I could say he, he could be. It's, uh, it's TV. They can make you look however you need to. That's right. <laughs> that is true. true. Stacy, I'm, I'm going to add one little caveat here Please. as you take it home um, about my butt, Mr. Doss. To know the kind of guy, and you heard a lot of stories today, he shared some great stuff. I learned a couple of new things today, too. But I'm just going to give you an example of what our relationship was like. And early on, we uh, our rookie year and our second year, we go to Super Bowl. You know the story there, very successful year. And he and I are started, we're having a great time. So the offseason comes, we get our rings. And my speaking career started by something he said to me. We were going to an event driving, and he was driving that beautiful, gorgeous, Purple, whatever it is, Porsche. Lord have mercy. Oh, plum. Oh, plum, plum. Oh, you never oh. see. Next show, I'm going to have him show a picture of that. I know he photo. got one. Yeah. I rode in that, and I swore I wasn't riding in another Porsche again because I was felt every little part of that road, but, <laughs> but it was fast. But the story is we were going to an event, and he looks over at me, and he says, p Dog, where's your ring? I said, oh, I just left it in the case, in the trophy case at home. He says, man, don't you know you're going to be going places where somebody is never going to have seen that ring or you're going to talk to some kids who are going to say, you played in the Super Bowl. Do you have a ring? And you need to show that because you will never know the change you're making people just seeing that ring. From that day on, I've been wearing the ring whenever I go speak. And he was right. My friend, thank you. Because the thousands of hundreds of dollars that I've made was because of you. <laughs> Wearing that old ring, baby. Mine's sitting right over there. <laughs> so there you go. For, for Rams fans everywhere, uh, you both have to commit to the next episode for our YouTube watchers. <laughs> Wearing the ring. Yeah, we could do I've that. I've never seen the ring. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Love we're going to have to do it. We'll do it. We'll do Absolutely it. love this. Yes. But Reggie Doss. There are so there's so much left on the table. We have to bring you back, and I know how close you and Preston are as friends. So we're gonna make you commit to that. Maybe we have you and Spoon on here at the same time. Oh, I, that would be cool. And I just juggle all, all right. three of that you guys cool. going wild. That would be a lot of fun. <laughs> um, absolutely a pleasure, folks. If you're listening or watching on our YouTube channel, Gridiron Icon, the podcast. Thank you. Like, subscribe. Send us your notes. We're getting a lot of fantastic feedback. We appreciate that as well. And for my co-host, the iconic Preston Denard, and his iconic teammate and our guest, Reggie Doss, we want to thank you this week. Big golfer right there, too. Oh, oh. Well, thank you, uh, Preston. I, I appreciate it, man. I know we, we, we talked about it for a lot of days before we actually brought this to fruition, as they say. But uh, I had a great time, man. It was fun. We, we do. We have to do this again. Thank was, you for uh, a great time to share some of those old experiences, man. Mm -hmm. Some of those mm -hmm. old things that just kind of cling to your brain and to your heart that you kind of never forget about, man. Stays a pleasure for you, man. I've heard a lot about you and uh, 
Oh. Only great things to come for you guys. You guys are doing a great job. Keep it up. All right. <laughs> well, thank you. I'm, I'm getting better about gushing about meeting a lot. <laughs> I was I was ridiculous when I met Preston, and I'm trying to get better. But Reggie, I was a huge fan um, as as a kid, and so this is a real pleasure for me as well. It's a real honor. Very cool. Very yeah. all right. So thank you, folks. Like, subscribe, and Preston and I will see you next week with another guest. Take care. Be well.